I also, there we go. I also do want to note, um, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of BPIE staff on the call tonight. I'm not, I'm, um, I, I will not be alone with leading a portion of the evening, mostly the introduction, um, but I am joined by my colleagues, Brianna Lee, Sarah, and Aaron McGrath, our executive director, who will be helping to facilitate the panel. Um, each of us will be playing a different role throughout the panel tonight, so you will um, occasionally hear other voices coming in in addition to our panelists. Just a quick agenda before we get started. Um, this is what the evening will look like. So we're going to start just by introducing our panelists, and then we will have um, the majority of our evening together facilitated by Aaron, as I mentioned, um, speaking with our panelists tonight, who I will introduce in just a moment. Following the more formal discussion facilitated by Aaron, we will also have the opportunity for a Q&A for you all to ask our panelists questions. Um, so as I mentioned before, you will either have the opportunity to use the raise hand feature and ask questions when we call on you, or you can put questions in the chat and we'll do our best to get to as many of the questions as possible. And lastly, as we typically do with these mentor development sessions, we will spend a couple of minutes just wrapping up our time together around 7 p.m. this evening. Um, we'll give a couple pieces of housekeeping information, things to keep an eye out for in your inboxes in the coming weeks and future events that we have planned that we're gonna be sharing with all of you too. So welcome everyone to our January mentor development session. Um, as some of you might be aware, this month is National Mentoring Month. Um, I have received a ton of emails about National Mentoring Month so far in January because I work at a mentoring organization. Some of you may have received similar emails, but because of the nature of this month, we wanted to, rather than hosting a training or a workshop focused on skill building or knowledge development, we wanted to highlight some of the voices in BPIE's own community. So we are really thrilled to be joined tonight, not just by some of our wonderful mentors, but also by a teacher and a BPIE parent um, that Boston Partners has worked really closely with. We're really excited to hear from each of them, their perspectives about the impact of academic mentoring and what their work with Boston Partners has been like. Um, so to introduce our panelists, we have Lily Piz, um, who is a mentor in our independent learning support program. She is now in her third year of working with her mentee, Rashid. We're also joined tonight by Byron Price, who is in his second year of volunteering in Miss Rosario's class at the Hernandez School. We're also joined by Lauren Garrity, a math teacher at Fenway High School. Um, Lauren currently has 10 mentors working in her classes. She is one of our champion teachers. We love working with Lauren and several more of her students also participate in our ILS program online after school. And then lastly, tonight, we are also joined by Sarah Batista. I haven't been able to check if she's made it onto the call. She's on her way coming from work. Um, and Sarah is uh, not only a Boston Public Schools parent whose son has participated in our ILS program for two years now, working with his mentor, Vincent, but Sarah actually last year also participated in ILS as a student, um, taking classes through BPS's adult education program. So Sarah has some really interesting perspectives on our programming, both from a parent point of view and also as a student um, that was working with one of our mentors. So please join me in welcoming everyone um, and we will get started with our panel in just a moment. Um, I also want to take a second to formally introduce our executive director, Erin McGrath, who will be facilitating our panel tonight. Erin um, will be asking panelists questions for the first portion of the evening before we open it up to our audience, um, at which point Brianna Lee will take over. So Erin, I am gonna turn it over to you and 
you can go ahead and get started with our panelists tonight. Wonderful. Thank you, Claire. I'm so excited that we're going to be hosting this event tonight for National Mentoring Month and that we're hearing from our community members. And welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us for making this us part of your evening. Um, if we could get started by having everyone on the panel, please introduce yourselves, share a bit about yourself, what you do, and what made you get involved with Boston Partners in Education as a mentor, teacher, or parent? And if we could start with Lily, please, and then I'll let each person know when it's their turn. Sure. Thanks, Erin. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Lily Piz. Um, as Claire said, I'm in my now third year working with um, Rashid, who's my um, ILS student, and I um, uh, work in healthcare. So I actually um, kind of coincided the start of my time volunteering with BPIE with the start of my first job. Um, I had just um, graduated um, from grad school and during the pandemic, and I think as many of us know, it was a pretty isolating time. And I was really um, interested in trying to do something that would, um, you know, per like personally and kind of selfishly feel like a little bit more connected to the community and um, wanted to really always been interested in education and um, have had like tutoring and um, kind of mentoring experiences in the past. So found BPIE um, and, you know, it's, as we'll talk about today, it's become something that's been really special and really uh, was a unique experience that um, I'm really glad I, I found. Um, and I think I covered all, all the bases there. Wonderful. Thank you, Lily. And I agree that um, mentoring could be a wonderful way to get more connected with the community. Byron, if you could introduce yourself, please. Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Byron. I am a neuroscientist and I work at a lab at Boston University. Um, I just also, similar to Lily, finished grad school recently. And I've always been um, kind of interested in mentoring, volunteering, and and through my grad program, we did a lot of outreach, but it was kind of scientific outreach. We would go to the Museum of Science, for example, and host kind of hands-on demonstrations of neuroscience and sort of teach um, usually younger kids about the brain. And I kind of wanted to keep, keep something like that up after grad school. So I sort of did a little Google search and looked around and I stumbled across uh, BPIE. And so I thought it was a nice opportunity. And so for the last two years, I've been working at the Hernandez School, it's a bilingual school, and I work in the classroom with um, one of the Spanish teachers, and so we're teaching the kids. Usually, I'm there during in the time of day where we do math, um, so it's kind of math in Spanish. It's fun, and yeah, that's my story. Wonderful, thank you, Byron. Lauren, if you could introduce yourself next, please. Hi, everybody. I'm I'm Lauren. I'm a math teacher at Fenway High School. I have had the pleasure of working with some of the people on this call. Um, I got involved with Boston Partners three years ago during um, remote learning. It was my first year at Fenway. I had previously taught at Waltham, and I was trying to figure out how to teach online. And one of my coworkers told me about Boston Partners, and I said, perfect, I can have some people in my Zoom rooms just kind of hoping to have another person to monitor the kids. And what I've realized is that it was so, so much more than that, even online. My students got so much out of having a remote mentor. Uh, and I've continued the relationships and I've had many, many mentors in my classes for the last two years. Boston Partners has been awesome and worked with me in building a summer program that we have at Fenway for students who might have struggled over the year and aren't going to summer school, but need a little bit more support to be successful in the coming school year. So I've been very lucky to work with them and uh, with some of you. So I'm excited to talk to you tonight. Thank you, Lauren. We feel lucky to work with you as well. And then finally, last but certainly not least, I'd like um, Sarah to introduce herself, please. I know that she's joined us. Hi everybody, I'm sorry, I apologize for being a little bit late. Um, I am one of the parents of the um, BPS and that um, BPS student that uh, has been joining the program uh, as well as myself. 
I was a student also recently that I joined the program as well. My name is Sarah Bautista. Wonderful, thank you. We're excited to have both the uh, parent and student perspective from you, Sarah. So we really appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, thank you. So I'd like to start by hearing from each of you about your thoughts on academic mentoring. There's a, this is a multi-part question, so bear with me. How would you define academic mentor? Based on your experience with BPIE, what do you think is important about the role? And Sarah, actually, if you could comment on this first um, from your experiences as a parent and a student. Okay, so as, um, as a parent, I have to say that the program is really, really, really wonderful. Um, it, it's been helping my son a lot. His grades have increased. Um, he's um, working with one of the tutors um, in math. And last year ago, I was like, um, last year I was um, worried about his grades because math was not the favorite subject. But since he's working with the, um, uh, with the um, mentor, it, his grade has been increasing so much. I actually have, um, I actually had a meeting yesterday with the um, teacher and she showed me where he was before the mentor and now where he is at with the help. So he is over the bench where he should be, which is so wonderful that I am so grateful to have um, to be involved in this uh, program. And as a student, same thing. I graduated from high school last year, but I thought that I could never do it because I know BPS are always like kind of limited. And I said, I'm an adult. I don't think I can find any help having a tutoring for me to help in any school. But I am so glad that I joined this school um, adult program. And I was still struggling with some of the subjects, especially math. Math was not my favorite as well. <laughs> so um, I heard about this program. And I said, okay, let me see, let me try. And let me tell you that I really did hate math before. But when I had the mentor, he helped me a lot to understand when my grades were um, higher and I could be able to graduate from high school. And um, I also now, I love math. I love them. <laughs> I love math now. So um, it is really, really helpful. I am really, really um, grateful for this program because otherwise, I don't know, a lot of people are struggling. They don't know about this. And I said, I wish I could go back to my childhood so that I can have some help too. <laughs> Well, thank you. That is wonderful and, and really just an inspiring story, Sarah. Um, I'd ask, like to ask uh, Lauren next, if you could speak from the teacher perspective, how do you think about academic mentoring and what do you think is important about having them? Absolutely. So I, I think an academic mentor is a, a consistent presence in a student's life and someone who supports a student in finding academic success, whether it's big or small. Um, I think some of the important characteristics is that consistency piece, someone that continues to show up for the student um, in a space that they don't always feel like they belong, right? Most of my students who have mentors are ones who haven't always loved math or haven't felt like they had a place in a math classroom. And so someone that continues to show up, continues to push them and celebrates even the small wins that they have. They've been, if they don't get the whole problem right, if they're making progress, they can see that week to week progress that a student is making and it, and it makes a big difference. Um, 
And so I think that consistency piece is huge. I think being a cheerleader is huge and also just kind of developing a rapport with the student, um, making that relationship making that connection, allowing the student to realize that you don't have to be the top person in class to have a place in, a, in the math world, in the STEM field, and to see different places that it uh, it applies. Um, so yeah, just somebody that makes them stay, be seen and valued, I think. Beautiful. And I really like what you said about the small wins. I think that's really important. Byron, same question. How do you think about your role as an academic mentor? So I think for me, it's a, it might be a little different than for, for an older student. So I work with first graders and, you know, their progress is a little bit less, a little bit more difficult to measure. Um, but I really think that, you know, one of the really important aspects is just having someone there who is not their parent, is not their teacher, is not grading them or judging them. You know, I'm just there. I try to be kind to them. I try to be helpful and I try to be consistent um, as Lauren was saying. So, so just showing up for them, helping them and, you know, with no agenda or anything. And I think, I think that's really a big part of the role. And, you know, I think, you know, as far as I can tell, the kids really appreciate me being there and they're excited when I show up. Um, and so I, I really like that aspect of it, just, um, you know, as this extra person who's, who they know that there's, you know, there's more people out there than, than their small little bubble that, that might be interested in them or care about them, you know. Absolutely. We talk a lot about a web of support and mentors are certainly an important part of that web. Lily. Um, I'd like to turn it over to you and having worked with Rashid for now going on three years, um, have your thoughts on academic mentoring shifted at all? And if so, how so? Yeah, I, it's interesting because I've, I've been in both the role of like a tutor and a mentor. And this is like combination, like I feel like the best combination, kind of this capacity to do both. So I guess when I think about now, kind of having been in this program and it definitely is I think just um, having worked with Rashid for multiple years now, and Lauren spoke to like the consistency piece, right? I've never had that really where I've been able to do that work with a student for so long. Um, I think that, you know, I've, for me, it's really shifted to become about um, not only guiding them through their academic work, but also kind of being there to support the social growth and the emotional growth that they have, even within just like the weekly touch bases that we have, I, I still get to see so much of that. Um, and you know, it's been really um, the, the time like it's fourth to sixth grade. So it's a lot, it, there's so much that's happening for that student. And um, I think really to just build on what Byron said, right there to answer questions, not to, um, I always tell him like, you can ask me any questions that you have, like I'm not here to test you or grade you. And I think that really opens him up to wanting to, to share whether it's things that he doesn't like, things that he does like. Um, and we also spend a lot of time talking about um, just uh, things that bring him a lot of joy, right? Like art or video games, or he's been trying to convince me to watch Cobra Kai. There's a lot of um, like great discussions that we get to have outside of just working on, you know, the, the subjects that he has to do at, at school, right? And I think that organically, he's also been able to find a lot of, um, uh, the things that he really does enjoy in terms of subjects. Like I'll check in with him every once in a while and say like, what subjects are you really liking in school right now? And which subjects are, are you not? And it, and it changes. So I think it's really neat to um, have um, my, my perspective to have been shifted to understand kind of how we can support students in all these different ways. Um, and just to see, um, you know, the growth that he's been able to achieve. Wonderful, thank you. So our next question um, is for Lily and Byron specifically, um, and, and sort of building on this idea that you've been with your student for a little while, um, can you talk about your first couple of sessions, what those were like, and how they've changed over time as your perspective on, on your role as an academic mentor has changed? Sure. Um, so... I, I think I'm a very, um, I like to plan things. I think that going into my first session, I was really 
um, a little bit anxious about, okay, we're going to have to, and we actually started the match in math. Um, and I think I got to that first day or maybe it was the second session, but it wasn't math that we were doing. We ended up doing like ELA. And so it's kind of like just the fluidity and the flexibility. Um, I've really, um, has changed. I feel like I kind of go into each section, each session with an open mind as to what we're going to do and try to, um, like kind of brainstorm on the spot about ways that I could you know best be helping him. Um, and I think that those first few sessions, he was pretty, um, shy, like I, as it would be right. And because, um, I'm part of the ILS program, it's all virtual. So, um, as Lauren said, and I really cannot imagine just like the challenge of like the virtual classroom and only do this once a week. Um, you know, for one hour with the student, I still felt like, oh no, I don't have, you know, the control that I wish I had to like help pull the student in and feel like he's engaged. But over the course of time, I realized that, you know, he doesn't need to be um, totally engaged with me, like for the full hour. Like there's things that we can do that actually engage him in some of our conversations about his day that then kind of pull him back into focus more on the work at hand. And I think one of the big things that you know, him and his, and his, um, um, his guardian kind of came into this program was with, um, you know, he's struggling in a lot of these things. He doesn't have confidence in his ability to do a lot of these things. So it was really building that um, opportunity to praise him on the things he was doing really well. And there were so many of those things too. So it was, you know, acknowledging them, identifying them, and that really helped to build this confidence over time. And so I think now when we, we have these sessions, we're so comfortable with one another um, his confidence has really grown and those things really contribute to like the productivity, right? Quote unquote productivity, but also so just the, um, the meaning or the, um, learning that he can gain from each session. I like that a lot. That gets back to when Lauren was talking about small wins, right? And, um, right. Sometimes it's what happens between the learning that the most learning happens. So, uh, moving over to Byron, have your sessions changed over time? And, what do you feel like your role in the classroom because you're you're in a classroom? What do you feel like that's like on a weekly basis? So when I first got there, the teacher I work with is um, has a very solid routine with the students. And, you know, in many ways, she can be very strict and and kind of the kind of person that you sort of have to win over. Um, and so when I first got there, you know, she didn't say much. I didn't really know what I should be doing. She just kind of kept going with what she was working on. And so I just was kind of sitting around awkwardly, you know, what should I do? And um, eventually I just thought, well, I'll just go kind of try to figure out what, you know, what these kids are doing. And um, and so I just started kind of going from table to table and just sort of chatting with the students and asking them what they were working on and if they needed help and, and just getting to know their names. Um, and I think just over time, it, we, we just sort of kept with something a bit like that. So, so I'm not going to, I usually am not going to be kind of planning something in advance, but I, I show up and I help where I'm needed. Um, so it often gives the teacher an opportunity to kind of, to kind of move um, towards students, maybe who she wants to focus on more, who are having more trouble. And then I can go and just kind of make sure that the rest of the class is staying on task. Um, you know, for example, making sure that people are speaking in Spanish um, and just helping with little things so that, and it's really nice because then it gives the teacher an opportunity to, you know, maybe take a break or not be as worried about like what's going on behind her back. Um, so I think that's really nice. And it's a big class, you know, I think we have like 30, you know, 30 students or something like 32 students. So um, yeah, I think that's kind of the the way it's going. And, and then one thing that I thought about that we're planning for the future is doing some of that neuroscience outreach that I was kind of talking about, I used to do before. So we've worked with students that same age. So I've been talking to um, Brenda, who's the teacher I work with about maybe spending a day or a couple hours on on something like that. So that that could be interesting for a little bit more of like a targeted programming that's based on kind of my skill set. That's great. Bringing 
bringing the neuroscience to the first graders. I love it. And Purdue is a big class, so I can see how having someone else uh, supporting it really makes a difference. Um, now I'd like to ask some questions for Sarah and Lauren. Could each of you reflect on the ways that you've noticed students benefiting from an academic mentor? Um, so Sarah, you touched on this a little bit when in the, the first question, but how have you seen your son benefit from working with Vincent, particularly since they've been working together for two years now? What was the question, sorry? It's just, how have you seen your son benefit from working with Vincent? Okay, Um. yeah, as I said, he has improved a lot in his math skills. And not only that, it's, um, it's more than that. It's like kind of connection between them, kind of more like family, especially that it's two years. So it is, I, I can see that uh, my son has um, benefit from it, not only in academic, but in relationship as well, like kind of friends. He knows that he does have somebody um, every week to talk to and um, spend some time, which is working together, but he feels more um, confident now and um, in a sense of um, speaking a little bit more because he was shy, especially in camera. So, but he's not shy anymore. And um, the teacher said he also has improved like asking more questions. That means he's confident not um, to, um, he's confident like in um, having conversation through this um, Zoom or uh, media something, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Building, building up that confidence, speaking up, not just with Vincent, but, but in the classroom as well is excellent. Um, Lauren, you've hosted so many mentors at this point that I'm sure you've noticed a variety of benefits depending on the student. Um, if you could talk a little bit about that, please. Yeah, I think a lot of what Sarah is saying is definitely true. I think obviously you want their, their grades to improve, right? That, that's one of the main goals. But as Aside from that, I think the confidence, especially in, in math, is huge. Um, the idea that students are more confident in themselves and also more comfortable advocating for themselves when they're not confident about the math because they've now recognized that it's okay to ask a question. When you ask a question, you get an answer, you get the support that you need. It's not you admitting that you're a failure. And I think that a, a lot of the times in a field like math, students are conditioned to think that if they don't get it, then that says something bad about them. And so having a consistent mentor who is there to answer questions and encouraging them to ask in a comfortable space makes them more likely to ask in a whole class situation or, or come after school and seek support from me or something like that. Um, I think it also makes them more comfortable with using their resources because a lot of the times mentors come in and they haven't done the math we're doing in a long time. And, and that's okay. I don't expect everybody to be 100% on all the little things, but they'll say to students, well, where are your notes? Let me see your notes or let me see your classwork or your homework. And it kind of triggers that response for students to recognize that when they're alone, they should be doing that same thing. When they have questions, there's so many resources out there for them. Um, and I've noticed that as like a big thing that I didn't necessarily think ahead of time would be an impact that has been. Uh, and I think that what's amazing is that other students in my class notice, like my students are constantly asking me, can I get a mentor? Can I get a mentor? Because they're seeing the success of the students who do have them in a variety of ways and not just the grades. Um, so I think it's had so, so many benefits, different for different kids, uh, but lots of positives. I really like that part about the resources. And I think it also uh, attests to the power of adults showing some vulnerability. They don't know everything either. right? And so it's, it's really important to be able to, to share that with students and see that there are ways to solve your problems. So that's excellent. Um, so next, we often get questions from our mentors about measuring student success. How do each of you measure success in an academic mentoring relationship? Byron, we'll start with you. 
How do you think about success in your role, especially because you're providing whole classroom support? Yeah, so I think in my situation, it, it can be much harder to measure success. Um, you know, there's little things that we do, like keeping track of how often students are talking, um, especially the students who are not native Spanish speakers. So we we were really encourage them to ask questions, um, to, you know, there's times when everyone's together in a group and, you know, getting those kids to answer questions in front of everybody and, and things like that, that they're really nervous to do if they're not native speakers. Um, we kind of take notes when the students use interesting vocabulary words. Um, and yeah, so those are kind of the main things that we focus on. And then, and then I just think about um, just sort of seeing their overall progress. Like they, they, they make such advances in terms of writing throughout first grade. And um, so just helping them along as they're kind of working through, I mean, it's a difficult stage. Like they're still learning all the motor skills to, to be able to write and they're learning tons of new vocabulary. And um, so, yeah, it's a really interesting time for them. Great, thank you. Um, Lily, if you could talk a little bit about how you measure success in an academic mentoring relationship. Yeah, uh, so I guess I'm really fortunate because, um, because I have been working for a while with my student that I've gotten to see both like the long-term and the short-term success. Um, but in the beginning, I was definitely, I was a little anxious because like, oh, like, are we seeing success after this, like these two sessions that we've had? And I was like, oh, maybe we should be seeing more. And it's really difficult to know kind of what that looks like. Um, but I feel like I realized over the course of time, you know, success for us would even look like, okay, today we remembered, I think like to what, to Lauren's point, we remembered a notebook today. We remembered to have like our pencil out. Um, or we remembered, or we were able to focus for 25 minutes before we took a break. Um, I think those are really um, great moments for us. And then um, more on the academic side, um, I've had lots of great moments with my student where um, you know, we, we will be working on um, like a math problem and we'll be working on it together. And he has, you know, he's asking me questions about it or he's, I don't understand. And um, I think that by the end of a session, if we're able to kind of go through a problem and then he's able to do it on his own, like that's definitely like a great, like little measurement of success just for like our one hour session. And sometimes those just like add up over the course of time or even um, at like a following session. Um, if he's like retained some of the information, I, I can usually will say like, oh, like that's awesome that you did this step that we did last week. And I think those have been really great. Um, more in like the long term. So I'm actually a scientist myself, which is um, funny, Byron, um, much more scientific now than I am. But um, I remember when I first was matched with my student, I was telling, telling them like, oh, I'm a scientist. And he was asking me like, oh, like, do you wear like a lab coat and all this stuff? I was like, no, I don't do that. But he clearly had an interest in, in science, even though that wasn't what I was um, like academically mentoring him in. And um, it's really not what we focus on um, still. But over the course of um, his last few years, um, he's told me and come back to me like, oh, I, I am doing really well in science class or like, I'm really interested in this. And, you know, I continue to tell him like, um, you know, you can be a scientist, like if that's what you're interested in, that's what you really enjoy. Like, that's, that's awesome. So I think those are like also larger successes for me, just to um, kind of his confidence in, him, in himself and his abilities um, have been like really um, meaningful like really, like makes me really happy to watch him and be happy about those things. Excellent. Um, and that, yeah, but uh, ch uh, that chance to talk about career exploration is something that doesn't always happen, but, but when it does, it can be really powerful. Um, Sarah, if you could talk about how you measure success and particularly from your perspective of having been a student, how did you feel like you knew that your relationship was working um as a student um i would say if i could measure it i would say from one to ten i would say ten because it was um 
really amazing. I know as an adult who was a little bit um, struggling for the students, kind of uh, trying to figure it out the time and um, basically the time, but uh, they made it, they made it. And um, it was, as I said, it was more than um, just mentoring. It was kind of um, family relationship or something that I, it got rid of my fears. And um, it was a big fear that when I was a child, my teacher used to hit me because I was, I was not um, kind of, I mean, I'm not kind of like, I got it just to uh, see something. I have to do it in order to learn to understand. So I was really, really afraid of that. And I was in panic when I heard about math. You're going to school and you have to learn math. But um, with this program, it did help me a lot to, like I said, get rid of my fears, um, kind of getting used to technology as well, like getting comfortable, um, using it, talking to someone through uh, the screen and um, learning a lot from them um which i benefit a lot and i i did not think that i was able to make it but my math got improved my grade improved so um as i said i don't think it's just the working it's kind of relationship success uh and um what is this like confidence yeah, I think that, that getting past the fear of, particularly, it's funny that we have so many math related folks here tonight, right? Because a lot of people get nervous about math and um, to be able to have somebody who's who's presenting information in a different way, people have different learning styles, which is, I think, what you were talking about with you need to do it, not just hear it. Um, and so being able to, to have differentiated approaches is really important. Um, and so then... Uh, Lauren, if you could talk about how you measure success in an academic mentoring relationship as a teacher. Yeah, I think that's evolved a lot since I started with Boston Partners. I think I at the beginning, I was like, oh, I just want their grades to go up, right? But I think a lot of these more soft skills that we've been talking about have become more of a priority for me. Um, that idea of self-confidence, that idea of being an independent learner who's not afraid to ask questions, who sees that as a strength and not as a weakness. Um, but I think it can kind of be summed up in, in the fact that when a student walks in the door, happy to be in a math class and says, is my mentor here today? That's when I know that that relationship has been a success because oftentimes the students I choose to pair with mentors are ones who don't come into the room with a smile on their face. Math is not a place that they traditionally feel seen or successful or valued. And so the fact that they're there on time with a smile and excited to go, I think that that's all you can ask for. And I think that that is when I'm like, I know this match has been successful regardless of the change in grades or skills or anything like that. Amazing. Um, so it's been great to hear from all of you about the impact of academic mentoring on students and yourself. Um, but if you could reflect on how working with Boston Partners in Education has impacted you. And Sarah, if you could get us started with how programming has impacted you as a parent. As a parent, if I could make a meeting and tell all the parents, please join the program, I would. Because it has impacted me a lot. I am so happy working with Vincent for a couple of years. And I, I know that it's not just with them, it's with the whole program. But as a parent, I have been experiencing working with him for two years consecutive. Um, I really love program. He is a reliable person. And um, um, I feel like he makes my son to be comfortable and asking questions, not being afraid of asking anything, not being afraid of math. So 
I am really, really happy for that because as I mentioned, my son was struggling with these subjects before. I um, tried to find help in other resources, but apparently didn't work. So I felt like ah, my son is gonna fail and he, he's wasting his time. But since I've been working with him, um, I mean, my son and I, because I'm here all the weeks. <laughs> so um, I would say it's been like really, really amazing. And it has really impacted um, my life because now my son is not afraid of math anymore. So now he has the inspiration to say, now I can go to college because before he was afraid and he was thinking that I don't think I'm going to make it. I said, yes, you will make it. He was like, no, because I have these struggles in my um, uh, subjects. But I said, well, I'll help you. But I did not, honestly, I did not know enough to help him. And I am not that patient as the students, the tutors, to help them. So I was helping him a little bit, but there was a certain point of my life that I struggled too. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I cannot go further than that. And, um, but with now with this experience, um, honestly, it has impacted me. And also the teachers are um, like surprised about his um, grades, uh, I mean, math skills going up. So he made my son comfortable to have the inspiration to say, now I'm going to go to college. Now I'm going to do this in my um, career. So, which is amazing. And it's, I feel happy for that because he's not afraid anymore. He feels confident. I love that. I also love that you're you're able to speak with his teachers and hear about the progress that he's making that way. That's really important. Um, Lily, could you talk about how volunteering as an academic mentor has impacted you? Um, yeah, I it's really one of my favorite, like honestly, favorite parts of the week. I think that it's something I really look forward to. Um, and that's not to say that I guess I didn't come in with that mentality. I guess it was something that um you know, I knew I wanted to do, but it, this has been something that I just really value and appreciate the relationship I've been able to develop with my student. And it's become so special in that way, um, just because I do feel like um, we have a really strong relationship. And um, I think that it's also really been a humbling experience. I think, as Lauren noted, like <laughs> middle school math is it's, a, it's hard to brush up on, I will tell you. I And I remember like expressing that to Claire when I first started too, like it was something that I was a little nervous about. Um, but I think to um, get to play this like kind of unique role, right? In this little, contribute a little bit, just this little bit to, you know, his, um, his journey, his school journey um, has been like, just brought a lot of meaning and um, has been a real gift to me. Um, and just like moments we've been able to share together, even the short amount of time that we do have every week, um, always are a highlight. And um, I'm really glad that we've been able to kind of talk about some of them here today, because it's not, we don't always get to, it's kind of just like the two of us in our little ILS time. So, um, but yeah, it's it's been really um, terrific and um, kind of beyond what I would have expected. Um, and I would recommend it to everyone. So I agree, like, it's just a, it's just a great, a great feeling. And we'd love to hear that. Thank you. Byron, same question. So, yeah, for me, I mean, I, it is, all, it's really nice to walk into a class full of little cute little six-year-olds who are always excited to see you. They very rarely, it's pretty amazing. They very rarely are having a bad day. So they're just, <laughs> you know, they love that I'm there. Um, and it's just nice, you know, it's, it's really fun. And, um, it's also nice to get to see a little bit more about, you know, what the Boston community is like. Um, a lot of my students are from the Dominican Republic. So I've learned a lot more about 
that culture and um you know they're either sometimes from the students mostly like if i'm talking with uh their teacher or sometimes with their parents i find out about different restaurants in the neighborhood or or different grocery stores like different recipes i love to cook so finding out about you know this uh recipe called mofongo for example um so yeah i really like that aspect of it and it's also same as uh lily was saying just a nice um it's a kind of a nice break in the week my job is very um very cerebral and um there's a lot of reading involved a lot of time alone very quiet and so this is kind of a nice uh break in the week from from that yeah there are very few things that can up your uplift your spirits faster than walking into a room of first graders in my experience <laughs> um they are amazing Lauren, how has uh, BPIE programming impacted you as a teacher? I think most immediately is it just makes me a more effective teacher when I have another supportive adult in the room who cares about the kids just as much as I do. You can't help but be better at your job. And that's both with the students who have the mentor and the ones who don't, who I can now give a little bit more attention to, right? So it's not only supporting the student that's working directly with the mentor, but anyone in the class who might need my help. We have larger classes in Boston, uh, larger than I'm used to at other schools. And so being able to give more time to students is, is always a plus. I think on a broader scale, it also sometimes gets me to just think more about communities and schools and how different it could be if we kind of all worked together with the same goal of furthering students and the impact that a community can have on schools and how we could just do things differently. And I don't have any answers to those broad thoughts, but it does get me thinking about it a little bit and just the positive impact that all of these wonderful humans have who are giving up their time to come in and support kids. And what would that look like if more people chose to do it and we had more opportunity to connect kids to, to people in the city? So just makes you think. Oh my goodness. Yes, it does. I think a lot about alignment and how we how we get more folks to see the great work that's happening in BPS schools too, and then to be a part of it. Um, so I want to thank you all for your thoughts on how academic mentoring has impacted you both you and the students in your lives. And for the last question that I'll ask before we transfer over to the audience members, um, we have one more question about thinking about the impact for you with the greater Boston community. Um, so one of the most valued parts of mentoring programs is that they connect people from different walks of life, and you've all touched on that in different ways, and from different parts of the same city. For each of you, how has working with Boston partners expanded your understanding of or connections to the people of Boston? And Byron, you had started talking about this a little bit in your last answer. So if we could start with you about how working with Boston partners has um, expanded your understanding of the city. So yeah, being a, kind of a grad student in the city, I've always, I, I always did feel like I was in a little bit of a bubble. Um, I, you know, going to Boston University, I've always lived pretty close to campus. There's a ton of students. Um, most of the people are from outside of Boston. And so that has been nice to kind of integrate a little bit more and feel like I'm a little more a part of the community. And, um, you know, I definitely didn't, I wasn't as aware of all the different communities kind of a little further from the city center. Um, you know, so since going there, obviously, I know that there's a lot of people from the Dominican Republic, but then there's also a large population of people from Cape Verde here in Boston. And so, yeah, learning more about kind of all the different people who have who have been here for a while or maybe have immigrated here, um, that has been really, really interesting and and kind of seeing a little bit more about those cultures and, um, you know, how they go about life and what they eat and and all kinds of that that stuff. So, so that part is, is really interesting. And I, you know, obviously I only go to one school, so I only get kind of one chance for that, but, but it is really interesting. Great. And I, one thing I appreciate about my job is being able to, to go to lot of schools and see the different communities in them. Sarah, if you could talk about how working with Boston partners has um, expanded your understanding 
of the other folks in Boston? I would say it has helped me uh, learn a little bit more about uh, different cultures. Um, as example, Vincent, it's not, um, doesn't live here. So um, it makes me like um, curious to like, you know, learn a little bit more about the uh, culture, where does he live, what does he does. And um, it's, um, it's very amazing and also has helped me like, it also has helped me in a sense of like, I'm not by myself. I do have many people over the world. It's just that we just have to look for this connection, but we're not lonely. So it has impacted me. Like it makes me feel like, okay, I'm not alone. I'm not alone in like um, struggling with my son. No, I do have some help. I do have some backup and it's, it's very, very amazing. I, uh, you as I said, working with him for uh, two years makes me feel like part of my family. I think he does feel the same thing as well. And just like, you know, like um, knowing that I do have more people around the world, around the area that um, I can uh, rely on. I think that's really beautiful. Thank you. Um, Lauren, how has it expanded your understanding of or connections to the people of the city of Boston? Yeah, so unfortunately, I don't get to spend a ton of time with my mentors, as many of them can attest. My room is like a tornado when you walk in, we're just going, going, going. And so they dive right in and are working with their students and I don't get a ton of contact, but it does just continue to amaze me and it's humanizing to see all of these people from different ages and areas of the city and backgrounds who are all spent giving up their time to work for the betterment of these young people that they otherwise wouldn't know. Um, so I don't get to learn a lot about them as people individually, but I think just overall, it just gives you a lot more faith um, in people and maybe causes you to be a little bit kinder when you were talking to strangers, because they might be one of those people who is helping out a student in another school. Um, and I also selfishly love seeing all the different STEM fields that my mentors work in. It's really interesting to me to see where math is used and maybe where some of the math I teach my students is never actually used. And how can I use that to kind of change up what I'm teaching? So I, although very different from, I think other people's experiences, I do get a lot out of it myself. Like that, that thought about right how those different um, careers come into play and, and right how is math used in different ways, um and then finally Lily same question, yeah um for me I guess it's a little bit different just because Rashid and I do um, virtual so I, I don't get to see like the actual classroom but I can tell you that I do even from like our interactions I've learned and like had kind of like from his perspective like what is his school community like. And I think that's been really unique. Um, even just like hearing about what he does in the day, right? Like, or he said he had like a readathon at school and like they're all supposed to wear their pajamas. Like getting to kind of get that picture of like what's going on and, um, you know, in the classroom and what is like exciting him and like what are, you know, his classmates doing and his teacher doing. I think that's been like a really great way to, um, to like extend my knowledge of just like what the Boston public school system is like and how they're, um, you know, educating your students and like different things that like stick in his mind, like, oh, I learned this in school today. And it's like, this is a great, I'm so glad they're teaching you this. Like I, you know, I think it's been really, um, it's been really um, like special to kind of experience it that way, even though it's, it's virtual. Excellent. Well, thank you all for answering the questions that we had prepared. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Brianna Lee, who is going to lead us through the audience's questions. Thank you, Erin. Um, honestly, those answers were so empowering and so great to hear. Um, so just like she said, we will now be opening up our discussion to a QA. and a um, Just want to set some ground rules before we get started. Um, if you do have a question, please use the raise hand feature. 
feature. If you don't know how to use a feature, you can just use your hands and I will call you. Um, besides that, we will have the chat open as well. So if you don't want to speak out your question, you could definitely feel free to add it in the chat. I also do want to say you can address your question to uh, the individual panelists, or you can just ask the question to anyone um, and the panelists will be able to answer. Um, whoever wants to answer can answer it. Um, but yeah, if we want to get started with the questions. This is your time. Beth, I see you have your hand up. Yes, because I forget how to do the raised hand. I'm so okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a question for Lily. You you moved. Oh, I'm sorry, the dog. Um, you moved up twice with your student, correct? Yes. And do you meet with the teacher? Um, oh, I'm so sorry. Do you meet with the teacher for the for the student? Meaning, to have you met with? Have you met with each three new teachers yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's a good and question. They all it. Okay. Yeah, so it's um, a little, so the way ILS works is that the parents proctor the session. So I'm in contact with the parent um, quite frequently, like most like every week. Um, and the parent has been able to get me in touch with the, the appropriate teacher sometimes. So the first year um, I had actually talked to like an aide in the classroom who worked more closely with my student. And then the next year I just oh, kind of over email was able to be in contact with his, his um, kind of like primary like math teacher, but it's not like as large of a component in, at least in my experience with the ILS program, um, just because the focus is more so kind of on the parents' preference in kind of this like after school kind of learning environment. So, um, but I do like to kind of have some like kind of sense of what's going on um, just so I can um, prepare at least to some degree for like our sessions. Um, but uh, a little bit less of that than I would if I was actually in the classroom. Thank you. Judy, I see that your hand was up. If you want to go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, the question I have is, I'm just wondering how difficult it may be for someone that's not trained as a teacher and the mentee they have also has a learning disability. Um, does that, how difficult will it be without the training? To, I, I've sort of done a little work to see some techniques I can use um, to help the person. So I'm wondering if there's any other suggestions when in addition to the subject, it will be math, but for example, if someone has like dyslexia or some recommendations to how to help a person learn math if they have dyslexia. I can jump in there if, if that's helpful. Um, I would say that reaching out to the teacher, they probably know the student the best and have resources for you. And I think just being very honest with what your background is and what you're looking for. And if you want like concrete strategies, or if you want to do some research about the student's disability, like what is it that would help you the most as a mentor? And I think by and large teachers would be happy to, to spend some time, even ho I've hopped on a call with mentors before I've just talked over email about just the best ways to support students but I think teachers generally have a good idea regardless of the diagnosis like how that student learns best um, so my recommendation as the teacher not as a mentor would be to reach out to the teacher and, and see what they have to say thank you wonderful um Bill Stanwood I see that your hand is up so you can go ahead and unmute yourself I wondered if any of the uh, people who are uh, de describing their experience could comment on uh, an opportunity. Would they, would they consider it uh, positive to have an opportunity to network in a more open forum with other mentors, people that are uh, experiencing the program over time. Uh, 
Do any of our bloody I see you unmuted yourself? <laughs> yeah, if I'm understanding the question correctly, like as a mentor, would it be helpful to be able to network with other mentors? If that sounds like it was kind of the question. I think um uh I think that I, I've also been on well, so when I first did or the orientation, that was a great opportunity to like meet other people that also had the same kind of like passion for, you know, in their their own time wanting to work with students. Um, and that was, I found that experience actually really like great, um, just like the online orientation. And then I've also have attended some of these calls as well. And I know those kind of serve as network opportunities. I think it'd be great to have more like time to get to like know and, and meet some other mentors. Um, so I would agree with that. I also do want to jump in um, and just say that we are trying to create opportunities for you all to continue to network um, and get to know each other. We have um, opportunities like this one where you can, you all can join um, and learn from perspectives of other mentors. We have our Facebook group um, and we will continue to, uh, again, create more spaces where you can have um, those networking opportunities in a more social environment. Um, so just stay tuned to more opportunities to come. And I do have another question in the chat. Um, and this one, I think Lauren um, and Byron or Lily, you all can answer this one. Um, it says, how much interaction is there between teacher and mentor? What is the ideal situation? I can um, speak first. I would say the ideal situation would be lots of interaction and I don't do that. Um, I think that we, I am just so busy going from class to class that I don't do that part of my job very well. Um, but I would say that like, I always say to mentors, please email me after the session. Let me know what worked, what didn't work. Um, let me know if you want to see the lesson ahead of time. I'm happy to send the lesson or videos that go with the lesson so that they can kind of preview some of the material. But I think just whatever works for both of you. I know for me being in a high school, if we have th five minutes in between passing periods and kids are coming in and kids are leaving. And so having that conversation while they're all in the room is not always ideal. So I don't think the interact, the level of interaction matters as much as the quality of it when it does happen. Um, but I think just recognizing that I am guilty of not always answering emails right away. And it's not that I don't want to, I read them. I really, really do appreciate them. And the more information you can give me about your session with a student, the more I can turn around and help them the next day. Yeah, and, and I could say, um, you know, in my experience, it's, it, again, it's a little different because they're younger kids. So the content, you know, it's not something that we really need to be like hashing out in advance, but I think um, really, especially when you're in the classroom, you want to have a good rapport with the teacher. So, you know, my, my teacher is Brenda and I've made sure over the year, over the past couple of years that every once in a while, at least I'll stick around, I'll come in maybe at a different time during the lunch break so that so that we can kind of get to know each other better and just, you know, just chat. Um, and so now, you know, we've exchanged numbers and, um, you know, we'll just text back and forth every once in a while. And so I think that that is an important aspect of it. In my, in my opinion, just maybe if, if you ever had the opportunity to, like I was saying, come in at a different time when they're going to be available to chat instead of, you know, having all the kids there, um, things like that where you can actually get to know the teacher, I think are really, can be really beneficial. And um, yeah, so that's my opinion. Wonderful. And I see Dave, you have your hand up. Yes, I'm working with a student, actually not through Boston Partners right now, but it just, just as well could be and this is a student who's got uh, an ed plan. And on an ed plan, he's allowed to, when it takes tests, have extra time, or even he's allowed to go into another room away from everybody and take take extra time. But it's been, he doesn't know, he doesn't do that. And 
he's he's sort of afraid of being stigmatized like oh i'm you know i don't want to be seen as somebody who needs more time and and also he has strangely he says i also i don't want to take unfair advantage you know i'm getting extra time and nobody else is and i talked to the parent and the parent says well he really respects you maybe you can get him to do to take the extra time so i've been trying to sort of hound him and whatever but i don't it, it, does anybody have any techniques or tips or suggestions of how do you get somebody who's allowed extra time to take the extra time so he doesn't rush through the test and make all kinds of silly mistakes like he usually does? I haven't had that exact situation, but I will say that um, something I've noticed with my student is that when he does rush through things and we will like be working on a problem together and he rushes through it and then I go, we go, I go back and I say like, okay, like, where do we think we missed something here? And then he sees, oh, I did like, I didn't do this or I didn't do this. And he like realizes that it was a mistake he could have avoided if he had maybe slowed down. So I always remind him, like, take your time, like slow down, like we're not in a rush here. Um, I don't know if that necessarily would help in in this particular situation, but sometimes I think just like reminding the student that um, that uh, you know he can take his time to kind of puzzle through this has been helpful just within like um, kind of the short amount of time that I spend with my student. Thank you. Um, I've mentored with other programs and I was an educator for about 40 years um, and I think one of the things you might think about doing is I think sometimes kids think it's just me I'm the only one like this and I think sometimes obviously you're not going to say well you know so and so had but to remind them that there are many many students and you might even you know there are lots of adults who are very um, accomplished you could probably even you know google you know you could probably find out but I think just to let, you know, sometimes they need, students need to be reminded that they're not the only one, that in fact, it's very, very common. And so maybe, you know, to not, you know, and to, to just remind them that this is, it's not an unfair advantage. It's just to level the playing field for students who, um, who need some additional help. And we all need help in something. And this young person, maybe they just need a little extra time. Um, so, I mean, it, it's not easy, but I think just, you know, to, to make them feel like it's not just you and it's not an unfair advantage. And I'll just chime in quickly once more. I just, from personal experience, I have um, peers that are in medical school right now and they get extra time on their exams. So there's, it really goes all the way up and it's, it is to just level that playing field and you can still be super accomplished and be really smart and um, need that extra time. Well, that's interesting. So even in medical school, huh? Does anyone else have any other questions? We still have a couple more minutes left. So bring them all in. Brianna Lee, I have a um, staff question for Sarah about how you and your child have navigated mentoring sessions. So do you still ask your child what they go over with their mentor or do you kind of let them handle it on their own? I'm curious what your involvement is like in the match at this point. Sure. Um, no, um, at the beginning, I was like, I'm sorry for that. At the beginning, at the beginning, it was like, yeah, I um, I was um, telling him like go over this because it was first it was like paper and pen, like hard copy, I would say, and um, then he was able to share his um Google Classroom, so um now it's like. 
I introduce myself, say, hi, I'm here. If you need any questions or something, and they know what to do. So um, that's why I was saying that my son is more confident to uh, talk and uh, being a little bit more independent because the tutor talk to him, okay, share whatever you have. And then he shares the screen with him and they know what they do. So I know at the last, uh, at the last minute, say, okay, do these examples by yourself. Um, after I'm done, do these examples by yourself. And then if you have any extra, we can leave it for next time. Or I, I am so lucky to have um, a um, responsible student. So he always asks, is there anything new? Is there something else so that I can get ready? I'm like, no, okay. I'm like, no, but no, I am so grateful that they are uh, both responsible for that and they just work on their own. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jody, I saw that your hand was raised. Do you still have a question? Yeah, I looked over some of the resources that were sent out early on, and it looked like they had, <clears throat> you could, I wanted to see what a fourth grade math curriculum looked like, and it let you do a few problems, but then it sounded like you needed a subscription. I'm wondering if the Boston Public Schools has one, or I'm going to order a book from the library for fourth grade math, but I was just wondering, the resources you sent out, it looked to me like you needed a subscription to, is that correct or? So it will always depend on the source. Um, any resources that we send out should be accessible to you for free. So if it was Khan Academy, for example, um, you, you might need to make an account to access more content, but it should be at no cost to you. So Khan Academy, which I just mentioned, it's that's a resource that I frequently recommend to our mentors. Um, it goes by grade level, by common core state standards. It's really well organized um, and you should be able to access it at no cost. Just Thank maybe a, just maybe a new password that you have to remember then. Emily, can I ask one final question? Yes, please go ahead. Great. Um, my question is for all of our panelists. I am wondering if you were introduced to a new academic mentor, what advice would you have for them? Um, they're just getting started. Any perspective, you know, from a teacher's perspective, from a fellow mentor's perspective, from a parent's perspective, what advice would you give them? And I can choose someone to start if we need. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start with Byron if that's okay. Yeah, of course. I think, um, yeah, my, I think maybe, you know, just, just remembering that, I mean, I mean, I'm assuming most of these mentors have, have probably gone through high school and, you know, college and, or, or maybe not even, but, um, you know, it, there's many more things than the academic aspect of the mentoring relationship. And, and those are also really important. And so even if you're a little worried or you feel like maybe oh, this isn't quite, you know, maybe I'm not quite good enough to be teaching them. I mean, just having someone available that's interested in the student, cares about them, is, is reliable and, and there to help and kind of go over things and, and uh, have a back and forth and have a nice relationship. I mean, I think that part of it is really really important and you know that might vary a little bit with age i think in my opinion it's especially important for the younger students um you know as they get older obviously they're going to be a lot more concerned with like their grades and going to college and things like that when and so maybe that becomes a little different as they get older but you know i think just keeping in mind that there's multiple um kind of sides and dimensions to your role and so maybe just yeah, not 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 worrying quite as much about making it perfect, you know, but just being someone who's there to help is is really great. It's Byron. Um, Lauren, how about you next? I would echo everything that Byron said. I, I think that when you hear the word academic mentor, the academic is the piece that jumps 
pops out first and you get concerned that you might not have the solid background in it and you're therefore failing the kid. And it, when it comes down to it, it's just about being there for them, being their supporter, being their cheerleader, seeing them as a human first and not just a math learner. Um, I think that no matter what their grades are showing or what their affect is that day, the students appreciate you being there. And that is what matters most. And week in, week out, you showing up for them is, is all that, that we're looking for. And it makes such a big difference whether you recognize it um, in that hour you're with them or not. I, I get to see it all the time and it's, it's wonderful. All right. And Sarah, as a, as a parent and also as a former ILS student, what advice would you give to a new mentor? As a student, I would say that um, I would recommend like, you know, like uh, to, um, I know everybody is busy, but I would recommend like um, to um, just um, try new, new, trying to try new things. Um, when I was um, studying, a um, couple mentors didn't know how to use like a uh, whiteboard or they didn't know where to go to find a pen on the screen. And um, some of them knew how to use the whiteboard or some other technologies, which was, um, new for me, but on the other hand, it was better than old fashioned having the camera in front of the hard copy. Um, that was really hard for me. So um, I would say just that like, um, maybe just have a plan to um, work in, um, on that as a student, as a parent, um, I just, I just, I, I just really, I don't have any recommendation, but I would say thank you to the um, mentors because they're sharing their time and their knowledge with us as a student and as a parent. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and Lily, if you want to wrap us up here. Um, I mean, everyone really covered it. Um, I would say like, go into the experience with almost like a youth-like, child-like spirit. I think it's great to like remember to be like learning too and exploring and investigating. Um, you have to do a lot of kind of trial and error sometimes, like see what works, see what strategies don't work and you kind of have to go through that. Um, and I, I think for me too, it's been nice to kind of just be, um, to come to Rashid's level, kind of like hear him out, like think like just listen to what he has to say because you know I'm coming from work and sometimes I have to turn off like my brain of like this is my work meeting like person and now I want to be like someone who's there for my mentee um so I think just kind of having that open-mindedness is really important um and I think I really appreciate what Brian Byron said too about like not aiming for perfection because I think that that's really important too Well, thank you all so, so much. Um, I apologize that we have not been able to get to every single question, but we also want to make sure that we wrap up on time this evening. Um, I want to start our closing just by asking everyone to give a huge round of applause, even if it's virtual, it feels a little silly sometimes, but a huge round of applause for our panelists, um, just sharing their thoughts with us, sharing their perspectives. I have learned so much from all of you tonight and it's just, I find it really invigorating and, in, you know, showing up to work tomorrow too. Um, thank you also to all of our staff members that helped us prepare for this evening. Um, teachers, administrators, everybody that is here tonight. We again, wanted to design this event in honor of National Mentoring Month. Um, and that is the common connection that we all share here tonight. Um, but again, just want to thank everyone for the work that you do with Boston Partners. And as we move into our home stretch of the school year, 
it's going to fly by, um, but we want to take what we've learned tonight and carry it with us into our future mentoring sessions and our relationships with each other too. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Brianna Lee and let you wrap us up. Yes, so I just want to end the session with a couple of different announcements. As you all know, we do have our Facebook group that you all can join um, to stay connected. Again, build that network, as we mentioned earlier. I just shared the link with you all in the chat. I want to remind you all that our census program has officially started. We did send over an email to you all, so you should have gotten that information. Um, but we will continue to share more information about those incentives as time continues. Um, and with furthering our education overall, want to make you all aware that we will continue to have these mentor development sessions. Our upcoming one is in February. Um, it is happening February 28th. We will be having a guest speaker talking about um, youth mental health. And we're very excited to have that. Um, it's actually going to be a two-part series. So the first one is going to be in February. The second one is going to be two weeks after, um, happening March 13th. Um, more details are definitely to come. Um, and again, with more uh, mentor development sessions come, just overall learning more um, and just, yeah, continuing on to build amazing community that we have of mentors. Um, if you all have any, any questions about any upcoming mentor development sessions, please feel free to contact me. But other than that, thank you all again for joining us today for this amazing panel. Um, and it was just lovely to see you all um, today. And thank you. Huge shout out to our panelists. Again. Thank you. Another round of applause for them. Great job. Thank you all for joining us. You're welcome to sign off. And we hope you have a great evening. <laughs>